So, first of all, um, I'm going to thank my company for bringing me here. Uh, G-Solutions is a company based in Italy with offices in the United States and soon in Dubai. We uh, are core developers of a number of open source projects and we can help you to get uh, bug fixes and new performance improvements and new features inside each and one uh, of these projects so that they are available for everyone and we provide a number of services around them. Uh, the company is open source as at its core. We only do open source software. We participate in open standards and so on. Now, to the topic of today, putting a map viewer tag in your HTML page. What is MapML? MapML is an extended subset of HTML designed to build maps. So the idea is that uh, it's trying to do what the video tag did for videos. You don't need anymore to use Flash or another plugin to play videos in your maps. You just put a video tag link to the video and the browser does uh, video, uh, video playing for you natively. So the idea is that this new set of tags, once approved, uh, right now it's just a community working group, mind, uh, should be natively implemented in browsers and provide native support for at least simple maps. Um, the objectives uh, provide a standardized way to embed interactive maps directly into web pages, as said, for simple maps, not for something as sophisticated as Map Store, as you might have seen in the previous presentation with all the tools and controls and filters and ability to edit, download, restyle, blah, blah, blah. Simple map in a simple way. Accessibility and usability first. This is kind of important, in my opinion, at least for any uh, public usage of simple maps. Ensure that the maps are accessible to all users, including those with disabilities. So, for example, the MapML viewer can be controlled fully with the keyboard, and it should have soon support for screen readers as well. Uh, it should improve privacy and security, and more impor most importantly, it should be very simple to embed a map in a page. Um, so, I will. I want to stress the accessibility first, because it's something you know. In our field, the maps are a very technical tool, and we no normally don't think too much about accessibility, but maps are uh, 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 an integral part of the web today, and so having support for accessibility is, as, as I see it, important. So here is a very quick example of some map ML in, uh, in action. You might say, oh, that looks like XML. Well, that's why, that's because HTML looks like uh, XML. But these are actually extended, um, HTML tags, think about, I don't know, math ML rather than map ML. And uh, here and there we have a, a map ML viewer in the OSM tile uh, uh, projection uh, with a OpenStreetMap layer and then uh, a custom layer made with a single feature at a particular position and with a feature caption that will show up if I overlay on top of it. And this is the little map viewer that you, that you might get. Um, as a reminder, if this was a W3C standard already, I would be able to put those tags in any HTML page and any browser would just display that map. However, it is not. It's a community working group. So in order to have it play, you have to include in your head a polyfill that is able to interpret and execute those tags as maps instead. So GeoServer and MapML, what's the relationship? GeoServer has supported MapML generation as an output format, which is an extension, you can find it in all releases, since 2019. So it's been five years already. Uh, when you install it, you can just go to the preview and one of the common formats will be MapML. You go to your map and uh, you are brought to a full uh, page viewer of, uh, of the map that you chose. How the map is displayed depends on uh, uh, the, the settings that you chose for the map ML generation, and I will go into it in a, in a second. So you can browse the map, zoom in, go around, uh, point on a particular, uh, click on a particular point to get feature info, uh, choose the layers that you want to see and, and hide eventually, and stuff like that. And so if I look under the hood of what's going on, I can see a map ML viewer with a layer that points to, again, a get map, but in a format text map ML. And in a special reference system that I can see is map ML column WGS84. So you can see map ML is also playing the role of a SRS authority here. Uh, the default generation, if I don't tweak anything, 
So if I follow that link that generates a MapML, uh, this is the output that basically sets up a, a URL template for a get map and a URL template for feature info. So the, the standard is not coupled with the WMS in any way, but it integrates to it through URL templates. You could have your own little REST service that uh, uses the same variable with a completely different protocol. Uh, there is also WFS uh, output, which generates in MapML uh, the geometry and the attributes as a table. So no styling, no, no viewing, it's literally just data. MapML tiled CRSs. So in MapML, um, uh, we have introduced this MapML authority because MapML viewer recognizes a bunch of well-known tiled CRSs. What is a tiled CRS? It's the combination of a well-known CRS like OpenStreetMap uh, CRS, for example, uh, so Web Mercator, uh, along with a, a tile grid, a tile pyramid that goes with it. And that's, in OGC, that's called a tile matrix set, you, if you are familiar with the concept. So coordinate reference system, bounding box, zoom levels, and subdivision. What are the well-known tile CRSs that uh, GeoServer can handle and the map viewer can understand? OSM tile, WGS84, APA style, and CMB tile. Uh, as you can see, this uh, has a sort of a focus on Canada because MapML is sponsored by uh, Natural Resources Canada. Um, in GeoServer right now, uh, we support MapML as a first class authority, so you can find it in the SRS list when and if you install the MapML plugin, otherwise not. Um, and it can be used for a layer definition, so you can force whatever map, whatever layer to output in that coordinate reference system. Um, as a well-known tile CRS, uh, it also doubles down as a tile matrix set definition in GeoServer, so when you install the MapML plugin, it will also auto-configure the well-known tile CRSs for MapML in GeoServer with the right names. So let's have a look at how you can configure the MapML uh, generation in GeoServer. So, in the publishing tab, when you install the MapML plugin, there is a new section called the MapML settings. And here are some examples of the configuration that you can set. One of them is the license title and the license link, which will be then uh, uh, generated and then be usable and visible in the MapML viewer. Another simple example that is on the way to support the screen readers is the feature caption. You can take all the attributes that you have and build a little sentence describing your feature, which can be then read by screen readers uh, through the MapML viewer. Uh, tweaking the map uh, MML output, tiling. If you check on new styles, then the display in the MapML, MapML viewer will switch from full screen WMS to tiled WMS. You still get maps, but along the grid. So classic uh, viewing uh, in tile support. If you enable tiles and at the same time you also enable a tile cache for that layer that matches the tile CRS, then the MapML uh, viewer will be configured to use WMTS, so cache tiles. Um, there's another checkbox which is use features. In that case, the MapML viewer will download basically the equivalent of what you saw for WFS, so vector data in MapML, and it will render it client-side. How? Well, we basically take the SLD and turn it into a set of CSS classes, which are then attached to the features. So the features have, they have a class. MapML features are just HTML tag, rem tags, remember, so they can have a, uh, a CSS class. And so we are referring to the, to the classes, and the, the MapML viewer is literally just applying CSS to them, like any other uh, HTML element. Uh, we can communicate scale visibility to the client. Uh, any sort of scale visibility will be turned into scale visibility hints for the zoom levels of the tiled CRS of, of choice. And so the, uh, the MapML client will react to it and stop displaying the data depending on the zoom level. And uh, if I want to push it and uh, do everything all at once, 
I can use tiles, I can use features, I can set up a, a coordinate reference system that matches a, a, a tile grid set, and I can uh, configure text MapML as a cacheable format, and then I will basically do vector tiles in a MapML flavor, which then the, the client will pull and render client side. Um, and so, yeah, MapML becomes a tileable, cacheable WMTS uh, output format that the client will use. There's an interesting detail about tiled features, uh, which is um, how do we uh, hide the extra sides that you generate when clipping? So in vector tiles, you typically have a, a buffer or a gutter around uh, the tile, and uh, the extra generated sites that are induced by the clipping are just outside of the view of the tile. They are there, but they are not rendered. In the case of MapML, the specification is slightly different. Um, we keep everything inside the tile, but then tag a subset of the coordinates with a special class that makes them invisible. So again, it's a CSS trick to uh, set them visible equals false, and then they are not displayed by the client. So again, using the mechanisms of the web to just get rid of the part that you don't want to see. Um, in JavaScript, you can choose the image format uh, for the viewer. Normally, the defaults to PNG, but now we have a drop-down choice to default to something else, like JPEG uh, or MapML itself. Uh, this reacts to the, to the other settings. So, uh, if I'm displaying raster data, it's going to be raster outputs. If I set up a MapML to display as a vector MapML, then, uh, well, this dropdown will uh, shut down. It won't be uh, available anymore because the only format that I can use is MapML itself. MapML service configuration. Right now, we have just one little lonely checkbox that you will find in the WMS service administration when checked. And you, when you do a multi-layer get map, so you do layer one and then layer two and then layer three in your get map, it will show multiple layers in the client. So same map, but with the checkbox enabled and disabled, the first one shows the layer group uh, that I see here as a single uh, layer. So I cannot split it up down and, and um, turn it on and off on the client. If instead I enable it, I have access to the sublayers, and I can turn them on and off and choose which ones I want to see. Looking forward, uh, what are we going to do next? So customizing the generation of MapML through FreeMarker. FreeMarker is a templating language that we already use for Get Feature Info, for the OGC APIs, HTML representations, and, and uh, a number of other uh, use cases. In this case, we are going to use it to allow Per people to customize the MapML output in terms of links, in terms of styles, and eventually also tweaking uh, parts of the uh, geometry so that you can, uh, for example, highlight only part of a geometry with a specific CSS class if you want. We want a MapML viewer for WFS2. Uh, this viewer will simply um, um, show the, the data as it is without any, any styling because it's a viewer for WFS, so you're still going to view raw data. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then we want to, to add the ability to add the new tiled CRSs in the map authority. So right now we, you have the five built-in part of the specification tiled CRSs. Uh, we want, but you have already noticed it's sort of Canadian-centric, uh, as in one of the uh, well-known CRSs is for Canada only. We want to make that uh, configurable and customizable, and uh, um, yeah, uh, so that uh, you can uh, introduce other tiled CRSs in the mix. Uh, we want to be able to configure the default projection for the MapML link, so in, from the pre preview you can decide that you're going to preview the data in uh, OSM tile versus CBM tile or Polar and so on, and improve the support for custom WMS dimensions. Right now, the client is already reactive to the time dimension. Uh, we want to, for the client to, to be able to recognize other custom dimensions and make use of them. And that's it. I think I was quick. <laughs> <laughs> Had five minutes left. <laughs> so, uh, do we have any questions? I think.
think what's important is when when W3C will acknowledge this as a standard. What are the expectations about that? So I'm not involved personally in the um, in the development of MapML. Uh, Natural Resources Canada has hired digital solutions to improve the integration and generation abilities of GeoServer with, with MapML. Um, right now there is a little bit of chicken and egg si uh, situation in that W3C says, okay, this is a good idea, but I want to see implementations, I want to see usage, and so on. And so we need to push so that uh, MapML sees more uh, usage. Um, my point of view, if you are setting up uh, maps for simple use cases, for public usage, uh, especially for public administrations where I believe uh, accessibility is a concern, then I think this is the, the right tool for the job. Simple HTML page configuration, just one head uh, import support out of the box for keyboard and screen readers. Uh, and uh, I mean, at the moment you don't have to do anything fancy with it, any security filtering, you, you know, all the stuff that you might do with a map store with, with whatever uh, custom built. Um, well, I think that the, the MapML viewer fits the build there. Hi. Uh, do we have support for uh, basic methods such as like uh, get feature by ID or get feature by class or something like that with these tags at the moment if we want to capture something? Um, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> because. Uh, my job is just to have a GeoServer generate um, the, the outputs, and the, what you're asking is more an ability of the client. So I would, uh, I would suggest you get in contact with uh, the, um, the MapML uh, community. Uh, there is a MapML viewer dedicated site with a bunch of examples which are kind of nice to play with. They are interactive, so you, you also got the HTML code. You can tweak it, see how it changes the map, and so on and that there should be some reference to get in contact with them. Thank you. You're welcome. If there aren't any more questions then, thank you. Thank you.